Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Cutrate Commander, the series in which we take a look at low price commanders and make budget decks with them. My name is Grazit, and today we'll be looking at a build featuring the scheming fey gang leader, Alayla Cunning Conqueror. But before we continue, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this content, and if you really like it, please consider supporting the channel directly through Buy Me A Coffee or through our Game Nerds affiliate link in the description. Also, be sure to stick around until the end of the video to see which commanders we'll be covering next, and what commanders you'll be voting for for an upcoming episode. So, with that out of the way, let's start by taking a look at the commander and playstyle. Alayla Cunning Conqueror is a 2-4 Fairy Warlock with flying that costs 2 and a mirror that has the following two abilities. Firstly, whenever we cast our first spell on each opponent's turns, we create a 1-1 Black Fairy Rogue creature token with flying. And secondly, whenever one or more fairies we control deal combat damage to a player, we go to target creature that player controls. Breaking down her core stats, Alayla possesses a mid-weight CMC, a low-power average toughness stat spread for her cost with built-in evasion, and a pair of abilities that allow her to build up our board state with evasive tribal bodies as we cast our spells outside of our turn, that we can then use to disrupt our opponent's boards when the turn gets back to us. Taking a closer look at her first ability, it simply tacks on a free 1-1 evasive body to the first flash speed spell we cast on each turn outside of our own, easily netting us up to 3 flying bodies per rotation if we're willing and able to stagger our spells across our opponent's turns to grow our board presence, which pairs very nicely with instant speed cantrips and draw sources to net us a body and potentially draw us into more spells that we can cast to continue growing our board. And the fact that these tokens are fairies and rogues should not be overlooked, as Demir has plenty of support for both tribes that only get better as we get more tribe members on board. And that's on top of our colors also having a decent number of payoffs that take advantage of our tokens being evasive to generate us even more value. And speaking of which, Alayla's second ability serves as a payoff for both, allowing us to use the tokens she creates, as well as herself and any of the other fairies we're running in the 99, as repeatable sources of disruption in the form of goad, which we can use as soft removal to force utility creatures to swing into blockers and hopefully get themselves destroyed, or as means to protect ourselves from the biggest threats at the table by sending them elsewhere. So, based on her abilities, Alayla Cunning Conqueror is a commander that benefits from us casting our spells on our opponent's turns as often as possible to build up our board state with disruptive evasive tribe members, so we'll be aiming to get as much mileage out of said abilities as possible by going all in on instants and flash speed spells to proc them as frequently as we can. Of course, that means we'll be running plenty of cheap instant speed cantrips and draw sources to maximize the chances of us being able to cast 3 spells per rotation by drawing into more, a decent number of quote unquote free spells so we can leave our mana open to cast more spells on later rounds, and even some flash speed tribe members so we can build up our board with creatures from our 99 on our opponent's turns while proccing our commander as well as some payoffs for all our flash speed casting to generate us even more value as we cast our spells. And speaking of payoffs, we'll of course be running support pieces for both fairies and rogues to make our 1-1 tribal flyers even more dangerous via buffing their stats and granting them additional keywords and abilities, as well as ways for us to take advantage of our token's evasive nature to generate us the card advantage and ramp we'll need to keep casting our spells leaving us with a deck that can overwhelm our opponents with a ceaseless torrent of spells and airborne bodies before they even know what happened. So let us make our way to the Fey Court on the Plain of Eldraine, where the new High Fey Tegwil can be found, and, at his side, his political ally, Alayla. She had earned a spot here after all, after playing no small part in his rise to power, her gang's cruel mischief and pranks befalling any political opponents who Tegwil's honeyed words could not sway, earning herself quite the influential partner in the kind Lord Italian's royal court. And with Tegwil's influence and Alayla's resources, this is only the beginning for these two schemers, and only time will tell how far their ambitions will take them. So, now that we know a bit more about the commander and playstyle, let's start taking a look at the deck itself by starting with the creatures. 
Starting off with our creature base, we'll be focusing most of our efforts here on loading up our creature lineup with flash speed tribal bodies to proc our commander with, and payoffs to empower and generate value off of those bodies and the ones we create as we summon and swing in with them. On the flash speed side of things, we'll be running Brazen Borrower as a 2 for 1 flash speed spell via its instant side and flash speed body to proc our commander and payoffs twice, on top of being a well statted offensive evasive body as well. Fairy Mastermind as another offensive statted flyer that this time helps replenish our hands by mooching off our opponent's draw engines or by pumping mana into it if we don't have spells to cast. Scion of Una as a tribal lord to empower our fairies and fairy tokens with its AoE stat bump and targeting protection out of nowhere. And Spell Stutter Sprite as both a flash speed body and a tribal payoff via its fairy themed spell disruption to help build up our board while disrupting our opponents. And then to close out our flash speed bodies, we have the legends Obira Dreaming Duelist and Namiris Unis Trickster joining our ranks. The former being a fairy tribal payoff that adds AoE life loss to every fairy we create or summon to help soften up our opponent's life totals, while the latter tacks on card selection and draw to the first spell we cast on each opponent's turns, turning our non-cantripping spells into cantrips and our cantrips into actual draw as we cast our spells to proc our commander. Then briefly staying on the topic of flash speed payoffs, we'll also be running Wave Break Hippocamp and Blightwing Bandit as even more ways to turn the spells we cast on our opponent's turns into card advantage. The first letting us draw cards off our deck to hopefully hit more flash speed spells and payoffs, and the second by stealing cards off our opponent's decks, which is less reliable but at worst can help us make our land drops, and at best allows us to steal our opponent's bombs and use them against them. Then pivoting to fairy tribal oriented support pieces, Tegwil Duke of Splendor will rather fittingly join our ranks as another fairy tribal lord to empower our wide board states and, should our fairies be destroyed, to turn them into card advantage. Nettling Nuisance slots in as a tribal on damage payoff that gives our opponents high powered bodies that they're forced to attack each other with as we swing in, forcing them to either weaken each other's board states or whittle down each other's life totals instead, either of which we're fine with, and, while technically not fairy support directly, we'll be counting Glenna Lendra Liege and Shadow Puppeteers as another pair of fairy empowering fairies that we'll be running. The former being a standard tribal lord for all our black and blue fairies that's evasive itself to proc and benefit from all our other payoffs, while the latter is a fantastic finisher that gives all our flying fairies a gigantic power boost the turn it comes down so we can alpha strike in and close out games. Then pivoting to our rogue supporting creatures, the legends Anawan the Ruined Thief and Mari the Killing Quill will be integrated into our build as means to generate value off of our tokens and other fairy rogues. The former by providing them with an AoE stat bump and on damage draw effect, and the latter by serving as a passive source of graveyard hate and providing our rogues with AoE death touch and on damage draw and ramp instead. We'll then close out our rogue supporting creatures with Una's Black Guard, who, so long as it's in play, has our fairy rogue tokens enter as tutus thanks to its counter distribution and turns them into hand attack as they crack in, which is a fantastic way for them to whittle down our opponent's life totals and their resources. Prosperous Thief and Grim Hireling then make it into the build as a pair of on damage payoffs that generate treasure for us as our evasive creatures and tokens connect, thereby ensuring that we'll have more than enough mana left over to cast spells on our opponent's turns, and the latter even letting us turn our spare treasures into repeatable, non-destruction removal to help us deal with otherwise resilient creatures. And then to wrap up our creature base, we'll be including the legends Ayara First of Lockthwain and Rankle Master of Pranks as a pair of miscellaneous support pieces for the build. The former effectively serving as an extra copy of Obira Dreaming Duelist, which this time pads our life totals while draining our opponents and we can use to turn our spare tokens into draw if needed, and the latter being another evasive member of both tribes whose on damage effects lets us turn our tokens into AoE Edict Removal, draws us cards, cards, or attacks our opponent's hands, all while proccing and benefiting from all our other payoffs as he does so for even more value. That covers all our creatures, so let's move on to our instance. 
Seeing as our build's main goal is to cast spells on our opponent's turns as often as possible, it should come as no surprise that our instant category will be our largest. Consisting almost entirely of cheap and efficient cantrips, draw spells, and removal so we can proc our commander as often as possible and make the most of our token creation. Quickly running down all the cantrips we'll be running, we have Opt, Consider, Thought Scour, Peak, Cling to Dust, Ephotic Wisps, Whispers of the Muse, and Think Twice, all of which we'll be primarily running thanks to being dirt cheap cards that replace themselves by drawing one at instant speed to proc our commander, but some do have some utility outside of that in the form of card selection to help smooth out our draws, or being castable multiple times to allow us to proc our commander more than once off of a single card. Then as some pseudo cantrips to run alongside them, we have Brainstorm as another source of card selection that replaces itself, this one allowing us to dig through and stack our top deck to help improve consistency, Siphon Insight has a card that replaces itself with a card from our opponent's deck, which is a bit less predictable but still useful and we can use it twice thanks to its flashback, and lastly, Saloon Division, which 9 times out of 10 can replace itself with another instant or sorcery from our deck, and, if we open with it or draw into it early, we can use it to make our land drops instead thanks to it being an MDFC. Then switching gears from cantrips to some honest-to-goodness draw sources, we have Corrupted Conviction, Village Rites, Deadly Dispute, Plum the Forbidden, Rowan's Grim Search, and Farsight Ritual joining our arsenal as flash speed card advantage that either turn our tokens into draw or give us the option to sack our tokens to improve their effects, all of which immediately replace the token we sack if we play them on our opponent's turns to not even really cost us board presence as we use them to replenish our hands. And then with all the flash speed cantrips and draw we'll be running to enable our game plan covered, let's move on to the removal we'll be running to disrupt our opponent's plans. Starting with Pongify and Rapid Hybridization as dirt cheap creature removal that replaces our opponent's biggest threats with vanilla 3-3s for only a single blue mana. Go for the Throat and Heartless Act as somewhat conditional removal that can generally deal with the threats we need them to for a very cheap cost. Infernal Grasp and Reality Shift as more reliable but still an expensive removal so long as we're willing to pay the life or give our opponents a 2-2 in order to be able to cast them. Curtain's Call as a typically 3-mana 2-target removal spell thanks to Undaunted, which is a superb rate, and Hagara Mauling as a serviceable if somewhat expensive removal spell that we're mainly running thanks to the flexibility it provides by letting us play it as a land if we draw into it early to make our land drops, or as a spell to proc our commander and other payoffs if we draw into it later. We'll then also be slotting in Counter Spell, Arcane Denial, and Spell Stutter as ways to disrupt our opponent's spell casting, all of which can counter anything our opponents play, and the latter two even fitting into the Cantrip and Fairy Tribal aspect of our deck while doing so. And finally, to wrap up our rather robust removal package, we'll close out this lot with some removal spells that are quote unquote free by virtue of immediately untapping the same number of lands used to cast them, with Unwind and Rewind both slotting in as some additional spell disruption to hamper our opponent's plays with even further, and Snap serving as a source of non-destruction removal via its bounce effect to help stall otherwise resilient creatures. And then as our last wave of instants, we'll be running Frantic Search as another free spell that provides respectable card selection at essentially no mana cost, Capsize as more bounce-based removal that this time can hit any permanent, and, thanks to buyback, we can cast over and over again in the late game so long as we have the mana, and Perplexing Test as the only board wipe we'll be running, serving as a budget cyclonic rift in this build that lets us keep our tokens to swing in with and gives us the opportunity to rebuild our boards before our opponents. That covers all our instants, so let's move on to our sorceries. In stark contrast to our previous category, the sorceries in this build will only consist of a single entry, that being Notorious Throng, which synergizes perfectly with our evasive rogue tokens by not only effectively doubling our damage output as we cast it via the evasive tokens it creates for us, but also, more often than not, generates an extra turn for us when it does so thanks to Prowl, allowing us to make use of our newly created army before our opponents have a chance to react, which is often enough to close out games out of nowhere. That covers all our sorceries, so let's move on to our enchantments. 
Following the same trend as our sorceries, the only enchantments we'll be running in this build will be the On Damage Draw effects, Reconnaissance Mission, and Abidant of Thassa, which pair very nicely with our Evasive Token creation and our Evasive Fairies in the 99 to provide us with easy to proc and repeatable card advantage. With the former giving us the option to cycle it if we need the draw but don't have the board presence to take advantage of it proper, and the latter's enemy-specific pseudo goad being situationally useful to break otherwise stalled board states, especially those that have flying blockers that our fairies may have a hard time getting through otherwise. That covers our enchantments, so let's move on to our artifacts. Reaching our selection of artifacts, we'll be dedicating most of this category to ramp in order to bolster our mana base to be able to reliably get to our commander quickly, and then have the mana necessary to be able to cast our flash speed spells on our opponent's turns reliably. As such, we'll be adding in the Mana Rock collection consisting of Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Demir Signet, Talisman of Dominance, Felwar Stone, and Mind Stone, as well as the Land Ramp Source, Wayfarer's Bobble to the final build as cheap sources of ramp to help us speed up and or fix our mana base, alongside Heraldic Banner and Midnight Clock as slightly more expensive mana rocks that do the same, and make up for their increased mana cost via the additional utility they bring to the table, namely the offensive power boost they provide to our fairy tokens if we choose black in the former's case, and the slow time twister effect the latter provides us with with so we can reload our hands in our deck with our previously used cantrips and spells to be used again. And then as our last and only non-ramp artifact in the build, Skull Clamp makes it in as a dirt cheap and repeatable way for us to turn our 1-1 tokens into card advantage, which is particularly useful in the early game to allow us to dig for payoffs and or more cantrips to proc our commander, while still keeping a decent amount of mana open to be able to cast any spells we draw into later. That covers all our artifacts, so let's move on to our land base. Quickly going over our mana lands, we'll be running Command Tower, Choked Estuary, Darkwater Catacombs, Sunken Hollow, and a Tainted Isle, all of which tap for both our colors and generally are always come into play untapped to provide reliable fixing without sacrificing speed. Path of Ancestry is a tap land that also taps for both our colors that makes up for its low speed via its tribal card selection to help smooth out our draws. Myriad Landscape as a slow but reliable source of land-based ramp from our land slot to help us get basics out of our deck and into play, and Evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse as even more ways to get basics out of our deck and into play to both fix our colors and make it more likely we'll hit gas on future draws. And finally, we'll be running 13 Islands and 11 Swamps as our basics to close out our land base. So, now that we've covered all the cards in the deck, let's take a look at this deck's breakdown. This deck currently has 20 creatures including our commander, 34 instants, 1 sorcery, 2 enchantments, 10 artifacts, 0 planeswalkers, and 35 lands including MDFCs. Looking at the stats that matter to our game plan, we have a total of 40 spells we can cast at flash speed, 18 of which are cantrips or draw spells, 4 cards that care about casting spells on our opponent's turns, 15 fairies or sources of fairy tokens, 11 cards that care about fairies or the color they are, 4 cards that care about rogues, 2 cards that care about creatures entering the battlefield, and 8 cards that care about creatures dealing damage to our opponents giving us a solid foundation for a Flash Speed Matters build with plenty of spells to cast on our opponent's turns, many of which can replace themselves or net us cards, as well as a decent Fairy Rogue Tribal sub-theme to take advantage of the Fairy Tokens we'll be creating and the Flash Speed Fairies we'll be running in the 99, all of which we can empower and generate value off of as they ETB and swing in. For general deck stats, we have 14 ramp sources, 19 card draw sources, 20 targeted removal sources, and 1 board wipe. Our draw and removal being off the charts in this build due to a lot of our flash speed spells falling into one of these two categories. The former allowing us to draw more spells to proc our commander more often, and the latter enabling us to disrupt our opponent's plays and boards while we build up our own. Then taking a look at our mana curve, we have 15 1 drops, 21 2 drops, 15 3 drops, 12 4 drops, 5 5 drops, 1 6 drop, and 1 7 drop. 
leaving us with a very low to the ground curve that aims to drop our commander on board as quickly as possible, and then, on each opponent's turn, cast cheap spells to proc her token creation. Then from there, we can take advantage of our on damage goat effect and almost all evasive board state to reliably get in for damage, continually redirecting our opponent's most dangerous creatures away from ourselves while we generate value off of all our payoffs, building up our resources and board more and more until our opponents are truly conquered by our onslaught of spells and airborne fairy forces. Currently, this deck is valued at 65.20, not counting the price of basic lands or shipping. This price was calculated by using the cheapest listed marketplace price on TCG Player at the time of this recording. For side grades, we can consider replacing Unwind with Fairy Tauntings to add in one more Instant Speed Matters payoff to the build to burn out our opponents with, at the cost of reducing the number of spells we have to proc them. Tegwell Duke of Splendor can be exchanged for Hullbreak Horror, providing more support to our cheap instant speed spells by turning them into disruption instead of empowering our fairies, and Pongify can be traded out for Archmage Emeritus, who tacks on draw to roughly a third of our deck, though we would be paying the price to do so by cutting a very efficient removal spell from the build. Then for upgrades, apart from upgrading some of our weaker cantrips like Peak, Siphon Insight, and Think Twice with some more powerful entrants like Shadow Rift, Remand, and Shadow of Doubt to provide us with more utility in the form of block prevention, spell disruption, and tutor countering respectively, Bident of Thassa can be cut for Kindred Discovery as an even more powerful source of card advantage that procs as our fairies get in for damage and as they ETB, whether they be tokens or not, and Nettling Nuisance can be traded for Bitter Blossom as another repeatable source of fairy rogue tokens to make use of all our fairy and rogue empowering payoffs. And then for those of us with the deepest pockets, we can improve our quote-unquote free spell suite by replacing Curtain's Call, Unwind and Rewind with Deadly Rollick, Fierce Guardianship, and Force of Will. All of which we can cast while being completely tapped out so long as we either control our commander or have a spare blue card in our hand. Making them all incredibly powerful in this build, but rest assured, just because they're free to cast doesn't mean we won't be paying a considerable amount if we want to run them. Thanks everyone for sticking around until the end of the video. Firstly, before we continue, I would like to give all you folks thanks again for helping the channel reach its 14.6k subscriber milestone. We're less than 400 subs away from reaching 15k and it's all thanks to your support. So thank you for having helped us get this far and hopefully achieve even greater heights. Now, taking a look at our upcoming commander builds, next week's build will be tackling the aura-focused witch, Ariette of the Charmed Apple, in a build that will slowly drain out our opponents as we enchant our and their creatures, and the following week we'll have a build featuring last week's poll winner, Sir Ginger the Meal Ender, that's all about sacrificing artifacts in order to turn her into the hardest-hitting cookie anyone has ever seen. So look forward to those builds coming soon. Then moving on to this week's poll, we'll be giving some of the uncommon commanders from this set a shot at helming a build of their own, with this week's contenders consisting of the rat summoning Totentaz Swarm Piper, the food slaying Greta Sweet Tooth Scourge, and the spell slinging top decker Joanne Apprentice Sorcerer. So please cast your votes in the community tab, link in the description, and let me know in the comments who you voted for, and which commanders you want to see me feature in future polls. And lastly, before we close out, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already, as this channel can't continue to grow without your support. And if you're feeling particularly generous, feel free to keep me caffeinated via buying me a coffee at the link in the description, or alternatively, use our Game Nerds affiliate link in the description if you're looking to purchase sealed MTG product, accessories, board games, or any of their other wide selection of products at low prices that include free shipping for orders over $75, and a rewards program that builds up store credit over time as you make your purchases. And if any of you would like to support the channel in a different way, feel free to check out the other deck techs floating around my head if you'd like to see the latest builds, or click on the link above for a playlist of all the Cutrate Commander episodes I've made so far. And with that, have a good one folks, and stay safe.